Well, good morning, everyone. I am Mark McCarg, president of Nebraska Farm Bureau. I'm so glad that you're with us this morning to talk about some ag issues. Uh, my background is uh, we farm in Merritt County, Nebraska, farming corn, soybeans, popcorn, and have a hog operation. We also uh, farm conventionally and organically. On our farm, we're just about done with harvest. We have about two days left, so hopefully uh, we'll get that knocked out yet this week. But uh, with this morning, we want to talk about a few issues that are really important to Nebraska. And that's basically, we want to give you a little update of what's going on in the ag sector, the biggest business sector in Nebraska. Uh, Farm Bureau did a survey here a few weeks ago, an informal survey of what was top of mind for agriculture here in Nebraska. And it was really interesting. This changes on and off. It's not always the same thing. But what we found out this year was that the, the input cost for agriculture and to run our farms and ranches is very top of mind. Uh, what it costs to do business. Uh, our senior economist, Jay Rimpe, is going to talk about some of those things. But we all know that when we look at our personal budgets, inflation really has affected uh, what we spend on a monthly basis. And that's also true in the ag sector, except it's nearly a hundred fold increase, not you know, the 9 to 13 percent inflation that the average family sees in Nebraska. So we have uh, input costs, and then we have the drought that's going on. All of Nebraska currently is in a drought. Uh, we are almost as dry as we were in 2012, which is really substantial. And uh, even on our farm in Merritt County, where we're largely irrigated, uh, our yields are definitely have been affected. Uh, they're down on our non-irrigated, but even on our irrigated ground, we're not seeing the kind of numbers that we actually saw last year. So the drought, and then uh, the third thing, supply chain, uh, certainly uh, has been top of mind. Uh, when we, bro we broke down the other day, and it wasn't a question of, it was a question of how much it was going to cost, but it's a question of, are they going to have the part for us? And so you see that still uh, ongoing. Uh, we, we look at inputs like diesel right now. That's part of the supply chain. Uh, we're at record shortage in diesel supplies right now. For agriculture, uh, diesel is one of our large inputs. Uh, almost all of our equipment runs on diesel fuel. Uh, so that's uh, top of mind for producers. And then finally, just the pricing on our crops and livestock. Uh, that obviously affects the bottom line. Uh, livestock prices and crop prices are at elevated levels. But the cost, the input costs are so high that uh, we're not sure if we can actually capture uh, the profit margins that we would uh, like with normally the prices at the level they are. And one other thing about the, the livestock prices and crop prices, they are high, but the risk factor, when everything we do costs more money, when we go spend, uh, it was $10, now we're spending $20, there's just a risk there, and we're just spending more capital. So that's uh, kind of top of mind for producers. So to kind of parse this out a little bit more, I'm going to turn this to uh, Jay Rempe. He is our senior economist at Nebraska Farm Bureau, and we're really happy that we have economists on staff that could actually dig into these numbers and help us understand what's going on in Nebraska. So, Jay? Thank you, Mark. Can you hear me okay? Everything good? Uh, uh, my role today is I'm going to try to add a little color to what Mark just described and talked about as some of the top issues that farmers and ranchers across the state are worried about that showed up in our, in our polling. And I, I want to kind of just paint the picture a little bit with some numbers. And I, I'm going to start with the drought. We know we have the, the drought monitor. We all see that. It's pretty popular out there. We, we, uh, a lot of people watch it and, and see what's happening. And as Mark mentioned, 100% of the state right now, or nearly 100% of the state, some, some form of drought. Uh, there's just a tiny portion that's abnormally dry. One of the things with the, with the drought, though, you get a sense of the geographic scope of it, but the underlying impacts to farmers and ranchers uh, are difficult to pull out of this. So what I've prepared here are, are a couple charts that are based on the crop progress reports that come out every week by the USDA, the National Ag Statistics Service, to kind of give a little flavor of the impacts of the drought on our farmers and ranchers across the state. The first one shows the pasture conditions that are rated poor or very poor across the state. And what I plotted, the red line is 2022, the blue line is 2012, because that's kind of the, uh, the standard that we measure our droughts against now, because if you remember that drought, it was very extreme. But you can see over 80% of the pastures in the state of Nebraska are rated at poor or very poor. It's not quite up to 2012, but it's pretty close. 
uh, in 2012, we were up about 95, 96%. So uh, unfortunately, we're getting at levels that are close to 2012. The next graph, figure two, plots uh, since 2010, the percent of soil, subsoil moisture supplies that are rated very short. And I picked subsoil because that's a little bit of an indication of the soil moisture profile. Moving out of this year into next year in the 2023 crop year, the red line again is 2022. You can see we're nearly 50% of the state's subsoil moisture is rated very short. And if you look at, I didn't include it, but short is over 30%. So we're getting into that 80% that range again that's, that's very short or short. And so this is the profile that we're working, our farmers and ranchers are working with, moving out of this cropping season, looking forward to 2023. So obviously drought is having an impact. This year, uh, the latest estimates from USDA on, on crop production is that the, our corn production is going to be down 14% this year compared to last year, and our soybean production is going to be down 20%. So most of that is drought related. We had some other weather events out there, but most of that is drought related. But when you're looking at the impacts of drought, you really can't compare it to last year because each year is its own different animal. And so what you gotta do is think about what would have happened if we didn't have a drought this year. So making some, accept or some assumptions about yields and prices this year, I estimated that the value of our corn crop could be down $1.1 billion uh, compared to what it might have been absent a drought. The value of our soybean production down 675 million, and the value of our wheat production, which was down 31 percent, or I'm sorry, 29 percent this year, uh, down over 100 million. So, which total that all up, it's almost two billion dollars in the value of our crop production this year, compared to what might have been absent a drought if you looked at trend yields and the like, and, and make some assumptions of prices. So that is a lost opportunity for this state of Nebraska, not only for our producers, but for our rural communities and the spillover effects out into our rural economies. So that's, that's something that's missing this year that normally we as a state might have had in terms of economic activity that we're not going to have this year. And so again, that's just an estimate. It's just kind of trying to figure out what might have happened. It doesn't include, it could be even higher because it doesn't include some of our other crops like grain, sorghum, sugar, beets. Uh, sunflowers, all those. And then the other thing, it doesn't account for crop insurance. Crop insurance will offset some of that. Uh, the, the latest projections I saw suggest that crop insurance payments will be up 500 million this year for the state of Nebraska because of drought. So there'll be a little offset, but still you're looking at a pretty significant impact to the state. Uh, for cattle producers, a little different question, particularly for our cow-calf producers. Uh, when you look at the pasture conditions, they're obviously the capacity of the pastures to run their cattle are down significantly. Alfalfa production is down over 20%. Hay production is down almost 20%. And so they're looking at a shortage of feed and forage for their, for their animals. Corn costs are a lot higher. Distiller's grain costs are a lot higher. So they're trying to make decisions right now on, on whether or not to keep their herd at the size that it is or to liquidate animals to try to cut costs to... to to uh, ma better match their herd to the, the forage they have available. And so those decisions, they're, they're trying to decide whether to liquidate the herd or pay the higher cost for their feed costs. And it looks like right now that most of our cow-calf producers are choosing to liquidate part of their herd. We, we're looking at cow slaughter numbers this year for, for our region that we're, Nebraska is in, they're up 35%. And if you look at the heifers in, moving into feedlots, they're up this year, and the heifer slaughter rate is up. So it looks like a lot of our cow-calf producers are liquidating part of their herd. And so that's going to have, that means that drought is going to have long-term impacts. So next year, that means there's going to be fewer calves born and produced, fewer, fewer calves moving into the system for our feedlots like we see out here, and then fewer, fewer cattle moving into our processing sectors. So that's going to have economic implications for many years to come. So we're seeing these, these real impacts of drought affecting the, the daily livelihoods and the, and the decisions of our of our cow-calf producers. Uh, so drought is just one part of the picture. The other part that, that uh, Mark mentioned was input costs. That's what I have plotted on, on the very last figure three there. This plots uh, an indices from the USDA since, uh, since uh, J January of 2011 looking at diesel, the uh, orange line is fertilizer, chemicals is blue, diesel is gray, and then the feed cost, I use hay as an example of feed cost is the yellow. Uh, and, it, and I used 
the period of 2007 to 2010 as a base period to compare to, because that was a relatively stable period in agriculture. But you can see the black line at the end going up and down, vertical line, is January of 2011, or I'm sorry, 2021, January 2021. You can see that all those input costs have gone up considerably since January of 2021. And I, as Mark mentioned, we know inflation is an issue for the general economy. It's been running eight to eight and a half percent. We're looking here since January of 2021, diesel costs are up 118 percent. Fertilizer costs are up 96 percent. Chemical costs are up 55 percent. And so uh, farmers are feeling that inflation as well probably even more acutely than the general economy. And so they're being forced to make a lot of decisions as it moves into 2023, trying to manage for these kind of cost increases. And, and uh, they, they have a, a big task at hand. Uh, a lot of the same reasons for this is what we're seeing in general inflation. We have the supply problems, the, the uh, international issues with Russia and Ukraine. Uh, the energy costs are a lot higher, which, which are particularly influential in, in some of these input costs. So a lot of these things is kind of a perfect storm. And unfortunately, as we move into 2023, I don't see it getting a lot better for our farmers and ranchers there in terms of the input costs they're facing. So I guess I'll finish up with saying, I, I, I hope I painted a little color around what's happening out there, why we're seeing some of these concerns pop up with, with agriculture. As farmers and ranchers are looking to 2023, I think they somewhat feel like they're a bit of a tightrope right now because uh, as Mark mentioned, commodity prices have been fairly good here and they've been able to, to offset some of these increased costs. But as we look to the future, the big question is, is that gonna continue? And some of the decisions that farmers and ranchers make regarding some of these input costs, one slip up, they slip off that tightrope and, and we're into some financial difficulties. So I think that's why we're seeing uh, farmers and ranchers identifying drought and input costs as, as a particularly concern moving into 2023. And then I'll turn it over to Nathan. Nathan can talk a little bit about what he's seeing on his particular operation in regards to this. Thank you, Jay. Uh, my name is Nathan Dorn. I live here by Firth, Nebraska. I'm a third generation farmer and rancher in this farm. Uh, I've been farming for about 12 years. I farm with my two cousins, Ryan and Kyle, and my dad, Leon, and my uncle Myron. Uh, we're a diversified farm. Uh, we have grain, uh, soybeans, and corn, both irrigated and non-irrigated. We have a cow-calf herd, and we feed cattle uh, for ourselves. We background cattle, and we finish them as well. And uh, one of the things we're seeing on our farm this year is that drought has definitely impacted how we are going to farm this year. Um, yields are down. Prices are up to make up for that, but having 50% of a crop is not the same as having 100% of the crop when you sit down at the end of the year and talk to a banker about uh, economic decisions that you face when you sit down and you try to play for fertilizer for next year um, seed prices are up uh, year over year over $13 an acre from what we were paying last year um, all of those things are going to affect my pocketbook all of those things are going to affect um, whether or not I can go out and upgrade my machinery uh, whether uh, affect whether or not I can go to my local town and spend money um, in the marketplaces there. And so as a farmer, it's very difficult to see. Um, every year we have to balance economic decisions with agronomic decisions. Are we gonna put fertilizer on our fields or are we going to um, hold off? Um, what's the cost benefit analysis? And this year we're not making agronomic versus economic decisions, we're making e poor economic decisions versus very poor economic decisions. Um, nothing seems to be working right as far as penciling out the numbers. Diesel prices, as Jay talked about, are up 100% over, year over year, more than 100% year over year, and that's something that's going to affect us going forward. Um, when we took, talk about the pasture conditions, poor versus very poor, um, that is directly affecting our herd, and it's affecting whether or not we get to keep cows. Um, we're not retaining any heifers. We don't retain heifers anyway, but we're not buying young cows. We're keeping everything another year, and so our herd gets older and becomes less valuable. Um, you know, the, another thing that we don't talk about is the fact that my, I'm not going to pay as much taxes this year because when we don't have the yield, we don't have the grain to sell, we don't have the cattle to sell, and we have, uh, we have an economic impact that way. And so the accountant and I will sit down and pay fewer taxes. Uh, my banker and I will sit down and talk about how much money we're going to need to borrow for next year and whether that's something that is, is feasible. 
Are we going to make decisions um, based on, on good years or bad years? And we hope that next year is another good year. We hope that we return to trend line yields, but that's something that we can't, we can't uh, guarantee when we look at the subsoil moisture as, as we go into next crop year. And so those are all decisions that are going to affect uh, farming, not just the rest of this year, but into 2023 and beyond. So that's what I have. Appreciate you. I'll turn it back over to Mark. Thank you. All right. Thank you, David. Thanks, Mark. Well, really, we really appreciate Nathan opening up his and his family opening up his farm. Uh, we're in his shop here, and it's a working shop. And uh, obviously, we don't want to keep him too long because we know he probably has got work to do. But uh, we at Nebraska Farm Bureau, uh, we deal with these issues every day. And it's our job to advocate for the Nebraska farmer and rancher. And so that's the reason we've called the press conference today just to get everybody a flavor and update of where agriculture is at. And one of the questions that I get all the time is, if you're not in agriculture, why does it matter? Well, it matters because just like Nathan said, uh, we are the largest business sector in Nebraska. Uh, a lot of the taxes or property taxes that we pay uh, go into the school systems or income tax, and it takes that strong tax base to make uh, Nebraska budgets work. And so that's one thing. But secondly, uh, we're all involved in agriculture because we eat food every day. And that's what we're in the business of doing is providing food for those of us in Nebraska and around the world. And uh, we're proud to do that. And we're happy to do that every day. Uh, thank you for being here.